Okay, well, thanks for having me and thanks for coming to listen to what I've got to say. I believe I've got some very useful and important information that is worthwhile to know right now at this time. My name is Leonard Bolst. I'm a physiotherapist based in Point Clare here on the Central Coast. But today I'm here to represent the Complete Health Improvement Program. The Complete Health Improvement Program was developed well over 35 years ago now and it's been steadily updated over the years. It's interesting that it was first started out as a program to help heart health. But over the years and lots of thousands of people have gone through it, they realised that there were many other widespread benefits. These included things like, especially diabetes, all those long standing diseases, big change with diabetes, changes with um, bone density, changes with cancer, and the whole body systems improved when changes were put in place. Now in particular, today I want to speak about the immune system. So I want to take the principles from the Complete Health Improvement Program and show you how they benefit your immune system. Stay with us to the end because I have a special bonus I'd love to give you. So in this environment of the Corona 9, or sorry, the coronavirus, COVID-19 epidemic we're in, the immune system comes to the fore. Now obviously I don't want to at all downplay the importance of avoiding contamination. You know our government has gone out of its way to remind us to wash our hands, keep our distance, avoid touching our face. These are all very important at preventing getting contaminated. But there are an element of us who will in some way get contaminated. So when that happens we need to do our best to fight off infection and that's where the immune system is so important and that's what I really want to talk about today is what we can do. So one big principle I'd like to share with you is the notion of whole body hot and cold. It's been um, often termed traditional hydrotherapy. Now, in our, co our modern culture, hydrotherapy usually is, is taken to mean exercising in water, so exercise in a pool. But traditional form of hydrotherapy used water, usually hot or cold, applied to the body in some way, and that heat that was generated or the cold that was applied had a therapeutic benefit. And that's why you may see some places this term traditional hydrothermal therapy, because it's really that temperature effect that you gain when you apply these treatments that, that we're looking for. So this notion of whole body hot and cold is important, but there's a few cautions we need to be aware of. And I'd just like to, before I go into the detail, just mention the idea of being careful if you have some long-standing disease. I'm talking here about um, heart and lung disease, diabetes, or any other condition where there is numbness. If you can't feel the direct heat or the direct cold, and then there is a, is a um, potential that you could get injured without realising it. So when those things exist, we need to find another way to apply um, some treatment. There's a great website out there called traditionalhydrotherapy.com. This website has actually been put together by a colleague of mine, Bruce Thompson. He lives in the Lake Macquarie area, not at all far from here. He has this up to date. And in fact, today he's putting another update related to coronavirus on there. Um, if you have any questions about how to apply it, and you can look that up, there's lots of detail there. The other comment I need to make is, I'm sure by the end of this you'll be keen to apply what I've talked about, but don't think you need to force it on anyone. If you're not comfortable having it done, that's one sign not to do it. And the other comment I need to make is, it is heat, and if it's too hot, it will burn. That's what heat does when it's too much of it. So it's important that you only apply the heat that you're comfortable tolerating. Otherwise, there will be a burn. And my final word of caution relates to if you have symptoms of COVID-19 and you think you may, yeah, think you've got it, it is important to see your doctor. Consult with your doctor 
and listen to their instruction, follow their instruction. What I'm saying here is not designed at all to go above what a doctor would tell you. This is really in addition to. And as you hear what I, what I present, I think it'll make sense for you. So with those cautions in mind, I want to um, bring to your attention the notion of whole body heat or cold. Now, when you are well, before you may get one of these diseases, or any sort of um, viral infection or a fever, while you are well, that is an opportunity that you can take to boost your immune system. And the way you do that is to give yourself a quick cold shower. Now, you'd have your normal shower, you wash, get nice and warm, and feel nice and clean and ready to step out. Before you turn it off, turn the hot off and ramp up the cold, full on. You get a quick <laughs> sort of a shock and go, oh, what's going on, can I do this? Yes, you can do it. Go with it, and ideally you want to go for about 30 to 60 seconds. Uh, you may not manage the full, the full time, but give it a go. Even if you start off at five seconds, and then over the days build it up until you get to 30 to 60. You know, I think now's a good time to start before the middle of winter, because in the middle of winter that cold will be really invigoratingly cold. So get used to it now, and what that does, it actually boosts the immune system. They've measured um, the cells in your bloodstream and those white blood cells and other cells that are related to the immune response get activated when we have a sudden cold after a, a warm shower. So that's one thing we can do when we're well. That'll help keep us well. But what happens if you are sick? or have the, have the flu coming on. You know, at the very first sign of any illness is the time to apply what I'm about to share with you now. The sooner you do it, the sooner you can respond, the sooner your immune system responds and takes over. You know, what I'm about to say hasn't been tested on COVID-19 simply because we haven't had enough time to, to, to do it. But what I'm about to share is definitely been shown to work with other viral disorders, diseases, and the effects of viruses. Um, so stick with me and you'll um, learn something useful as my plan. So at the very first sign of illness, and we're talking here about where you get a headache, body aches, um, you just sort of go, oh, I can feel something coming on. When that happens, that's the time to um, take action. And the action is to heat the whole body in some way, but not with exercise. It needs to be a passive heat. And once you've done that, followed by a quick cold, a bit like that cold shower I mentioned, and then would you want to stay warm, rest up, and if it's in the evening, go to sleep. So how can you achieve a whole body heat? You know, in our culture, probably the easiest way would be to have a hot bath. And what I'm talking about is a hot bath that is not almost hot, but hot. So the idea would be if you fill the tub, you know, sort of third full of a temperature that is comfortable to get into, as warm as you can comfortably hop in. Once you accommodate, then turn the hot water on and let the tub warm up more and more. It is important that it's comfortable for you, not too hot that you burn yourself but comfortable enough that you feel like you are getting warm. And what will happen is you'll develop a sweat. You, sh you should notice it on your top lip or your forehead, or if it's really hot, you'll probably feel it just pouring off your face. When you get hot and sweaty, that's a sign that you're hot enough. And you'll probably say, I had enough of this, I need to get out of here. Well, when that happens, that's the sign that it's time that you've been in there long enough. It's usually around the 15 to 20 minute mark and that's the time to, to hop out. Once you get out, you then give yourself a cold shower. So 30 seconds to a minute of a cold shower immediately after getting out of a hot bath, it'll actually feel invigorating and you'll, in, you'll enjoy the experience. Um, try me if, you, if you're not sure. I mean, test it out if you're not, not sure. Um, after that, dry off, go to bed, rest and sleep. 
So that's the, the, um, the, the, what we can do in our culture. Um, in places like Finland, where saunas are very prevalent, it's another option for them. If you have access to a sauna, all the better. You should use it. You know, in Finland, just out of interest, that population is roughly 5 million. They have at least 2 million saunas in the country. And if you consider that each one will hold at least two, but most of them hold four people, the whole country can hop in the sauna all at once. And um, that's very much their culture. We don't have it here quite the same. But you may sort of think back that the, the Finns are big on a sauna, you go roll in the snow or swim in the icy waters. And just anecdotally, if you look at the COVID numbers, Finland is one of the countries that is doing relatively well when you compare it with the other Nordic countries in terms of um, resisting the, this COVID-19 bug. So you could have a hot bath, you could have a sauna. Another option would be a hot foot bath. Now, obviously it's not your whole body, but the idea would be that you put your, get a, a laundry sort of tub or basin and in there you'd put in at least eight inches of warm water, hot enough that you can tolerate it obviously with your feet. And then if that's not really that hot, you can then top it up or get someone to top it up with you with some hotter water. Make sure that it's stirred in gently. And again, not so hot that you burn but are just as hot as you can comfortably and easily tolerate. And that way you'll be able to heat the body from below. At the same time as that, you would put on a jacket, ski jacket or some blankets, keep the rest of yourself warm and drink a nice hot drink. A lemon drink would be the ideal, but a hot drink to heat the inside and then um, keep yourself covered up and have the warmth from your feet going through your body. And you'll notice that that way you'll actually develop a sweat as well. And when that happens, the whole body heats up and nature takes its course. The immune system gets stimulated. And particularly when you then go and have the cold shower. So whether you have a hot bath, a sauna, or the hot foot bath, either way, you wanna finish with a quick cold shower and then dry off, don't get a chill, it's important if um, it's sort of a cooler time of the year, keep the doors closed, make sure there's no breeze or wind blowing so that when you're drying off, you don't get a chill. Then go to sleep and relax. You'd be surprised how well you feel the next morning. Now, like I said before, the sooner you do it in the course of the illness, the quicker the response will be. You might say, well, they'll do this every day for how often or what? The ideal would be to do this every day for a maximum of just three days. Usually you find that three days is ample time to recover from any sort of um, flu-like bug. It is important, like I said before, if you don't feel like you're recovering, definitely go and see your doctor. It's not a panacea of everything but you'll be very surprised how well it will make you feel and you will turn around quite more quickly. So that's the notion of a hot, or sorry, should I say whole body hot followed by a quick cold. And um, if you can apply that, you'd be surprised, like I said, how well you feel. So there it is again as a summary. First sign of illness, give yourself whole body heat until you start to sweat followed by a quick cold, and quick is only 30 to 60 seconds. Stay warm, rest and sleep, and have some extra water because when you sweat, you want it to be replaced, otherwise you will get, get too dry inside. So that's the big thing about whole body hot and cold that I'd like you to, um, to be aware of. So what else can we do? You know, CHIP, the Complete Health Improvement Program, teaches you how to eat and in particular whole plant foods. So I'm not saying eat the whole plant but I'm saying eat plant foods in, a, in its full state as, as possible. So you know if you're going to eat grains you want to eat the whole grain not not the white refined stuff. 
Uh, when you eat something sweet, you're best off to eat a whole date or some fruit rather than the, the refined sugar added into something else. So when it comes to eating whole plant-based foods, you know, there's all those fruits, there's vegetables, there's nuts, there's seeds, there's the uh, legumes, things like lentils and chickpeas. The range goes on and on. But if you eat it in its whole, as whole as possible, it'll give you a greater benefit. You know, Michael Pollan, he said um, to eat food, mostly plants and not too much. And when he said to eat food, he means food as opposed to processed products that started off as food. So if something's come out of a factory, then there's a good chance that it's not, not very whole. So keep that in mind when you go to, to eat, that you choose as whole a plant food as possible. You know, the leafy, dark leafy greens in particular, the bright coloured um, berries, the bright coloured um, things like carrots, beetroot, uh, sweet potatoes, the more colour in your food, the better it's going to be when it's all processed inside of you. So whole plant foods have shown to have a big role to play in boosting our full health and our immune system. The other thing I must mention is sleep. You know, it probably goes without saying for many people that you need your sleep, it's good, for you, good to stay healthy. But in this era of screens, it's very easy to get drawn into um, staying up just a bit later, you know, just working on this, just checking my Facebook, and before you know it, it's too late. You know, it is really important to get your full eight hours sleep. There's been a bit of research done around this, and they've actually, there's a study that comes to mind where they had two groups of people. One group slept for seven hours or less, and the other group slept for eight hours or more. And there was roughly 50 people in each group. And what they did was they had them on these sleep regimes for a fortnight leading up to the study. And what they then did was they actually injected rhinovirus up the back of their throat. That's the bug that gives you the common cold. And they then just took notice of how often these people developed a cold. And what happened was that those who slept the most, had least colds. That wasn't a surprise, was it? The surprise might be this, that those who had the least amount of sleep, the seven hour and less sleepers, had three times the amount of colds. So that's a potent effect if you want to keep your immune system active to ward off the viruses, the bugs that are floating around. Make sure you can do your best to get, get your good full eight hour sleep. And the other comment on sleep is, you want to do your best to get good sleep. And by good sleep, I mean going to bed before midnight, preferably two hours before midnight, at least. For some reason, the sleep in that early time has a, a more rejuvenating effect. And other research shows that it's when we're sleeping that our healing actually occurs. And that's why it's, sleep is important, it helps the immune system provide this healing response. The other comment about sleep is if you're having trouble sleeping, make sure the room is dark as you can get it, as quiet as possible. Some people need a bit of um, background noise, maybe some light music, but to get your best sleep you want to avoid using screens before bed. You know that first hour before sleep time you really want to go without a screen. By screen, I mean TV, iPad, phone, all those things. And there's other evidence out there to tell us that we should keep our phone, our mobile phone, not beside the bed. Those um, low-grade radiation just builds up over time. So put your phone in the other room. If you need it there because it's your alarm or something, put it on airplane mode to minimise any of those other side effects. So it's hot and cold, plant food, sleep. What else do we need? Um, vitamins. Now, I'm not saying to go out and buy the shop load of um, vitamin tablets, but there's just two vitamins I want to mention in particular. 
And these are vitamin C and D. Now, vitamin C, we're told we need roughly 200, 250 milligrams a day, which is not a lot. And it's readily available in this country in our food. So if you go back to what I said before about eating whole plants and um, fresh food, if we eat fruits and vegetables, like I said, the bright coloured foods, there's plenty of vitamin C there. Even potatoes have a substantial amount of vitamin C. And vitamin D is the other one we need to mention in regards to our immune system. It's an important um, part of what allows the immune system to function. And in our climate, we have plenty of sunlight available. So obviously be careful in terms of getting burnt. If you've got very fair skin, you need to be extra careful and you'll know that. But it is important to make sure we do get enough sunlight so we can get that vitamin D. Now, if for some reason you can't either go outside or you sort of think your vitamin D is low, you can take supplements. But your best bet would be to go and see your doctor. If they agree with you, they'll get it measured, see what your level is, and they'll work out what, how much you should take. So if your vitamin D you think is not crash hot, talk to your doctor and um, they will help work out how much you need. Now here's the good one though, exercise. As a physiotherapist, exercise is um, what I, one of the things I live for. Now, it too has been shown to boost your immune system. So for some of you, you might say, oh, exercise, that sounds like hard work. But it's fun work. So find something that you can enjoy doing and where you can actually get your heart rate, and get your breathing elevated in some way. You know, I love riding my bike up a mountain track somewhere. Um, others might prefer to go walking, running, jogging. Um, you can swim, you could um, lift weights, you could dance. I can't dance, that's why I'm not. Um, but you know, all of those sort of options are out there. Anything that makes you move, makes you breathe more, you know, is giving that immune system a kick and is a form of, of great quality activity and exercise. If you can't get outside, if you sort of feel like you're a bit frail and scared of um, the neighbour's dog or whatever it is, or you can only get a chance when it's dark, you don't want to go out in the dark, you know, you'd be surprised how active you can get standing up, walking on the spot. And if you think that's something that's pretty easy, it is. Uh, the hardest part is actually keeping it up because you've got to stay a bit motivated. But put some music on and walk on the spot. You'd be surprised how quickly that elevates your heart rate and gets you breathing. So while we all have excuses, most of them we can find a way around. It's just a matter of remaining motivated. So hopefully what I'm saying here will help keep you motivated. I mean, you don't want to get COVID-19, do you? I hope not. This is one way to stay free of, of the bugs that are out there. What else can we do? You know, something that's so common right now is stress. Especially in this environment, we're living all indoors, can't go out, can't go to the park, can't meet your friends, the kids are under your feet, and you're sort of going, oh, I had enough of this. Well, I'm sorry I can't deal with all of your stress for you. However, this is the free offer I have for you. And this is the, a thing called the Live More Project. The Live More Project has been designed by a guy named Dr. Darren Morton. He's from the um, Avondale University College in the Lake Macquarie campus. He's one of the um, co-presenters on the CHIP program. He's spent the last 15 years putting this together. And this is a great program because what it does, it brings together scientifically proven strategies both from uh, neuroscience, which is sort of a new field, psychology, both old and new, and the, um, the medical fraternity He's brought it together in a fun package which we can experience and it actually gives you a boost. So it's, it's um, delivered online. You don't have to leave home, so it suits this time where we're at home. It's delivered online in, in 10 sessions. They're only about um, 20 minutes to half hour each, depending on which session we're on. But he goes through how the, the mind works, how what we do and what we see affects the way we, we respond. And he talks about things that we can do to make our response more effective 
in terms of health, both body health and mind health. So I'd encourage you to take me up on that offer. It's not always uh, free, normally you have to pay for it, but until the end of May we're able to offer this at no cost to you. And it's a great program, it's fairly recently put together and it's been shown to be effective. They give you um, special tasks to do, most of them are great fun. The ones that aren't so fun, after you've done them you realise it was fun, it's just looking forward to it, it's a bit of a, can be a challenge, but they're great things to, to do together and um, give you a real boost and you realise how simple things can be. So, to summarise I want you just to remember the notion of hot and cold therapy. It has been used for many years, in fact for decades, and it's been shown to be useful for viral dis disease and virals, viruses that are, um, have been around for a long time and also for new ones it should work just the same way. So it's hot and cold, there is eat well, eating fresh whole plant food, the notion of sleeping well, the notion of exercise and the idea of managing your stress. And with this free offer from the people at CHIP, I think you'll find you um, you'll only benefit. I must mention again though that last website any questions, the website traditionalhydrotherapy.com. You will find lots of answers there. Feel free to give me a call on that phone number. Um, check out our Facebook page, Gosford Chip, or send an email if you'd rather communicate that way. But any questions, I'd love to help you, and uh, that's what we're here for, is to offer you whatever help you may need. So I look forward to hearing from you. Stay well, keep washing those, those hands, and give that immune system a boost by those um, cold showers. All the best and um, I look forward to hearing from you. Bye for now.